Hi, everyone, and welcome to another a and Horror Movies video. I'm Aaron. I'm Ben. And today we are joined by, I guess I would say, the masterminds behind the new horror, Harlow's Haunt. Um, we have Terry Jarrell, the director, writer, producer, and probably many other hats that I'm not thinking of. Welcome. Four or five more. Four or so. five, yes. And we also <laughs> we have Amy Rolfson on who plays Beth in the film. And you're also the you let's see, the assistant director, I think. Is that right? Um Yeah, I, I did help out with that. <laughs> awesome. And you and Terry run Black Dog Films, which produced the movie. And we also have Dylan Intriago who plays Ben in the film. Hello. Thank you guys for joining yeah. us today. Thank you here. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having us. Yeah, welcome. thanks for having us on. We've been looking forward to it for you know, ever since we've been talking about for a it. A while now. Get excited yeah, yeah, all yeah. week. Yeah. Show the cover. First of all, the cover is amazing. I don't know who uh, who designed this, but wow, talk about. It, awesome. it was just a piece of stock art we saw off the internet. No, I'm lying. <laughs> um, I, I just I, found it. Yeah, and I just that, found that, it. It, a, I, it came on this this uh, this thermal cup I've got uh, that may wow. or may not be available yeah. soon in the hot shop. How about that? Really nice. Um, no, our our art guy uh, Kevin Cleveland mm -hmm. is a local guy, a local uh, kind of horror fantasy artist. Uh, did a really great job, and that is. Um, actually um uh, a still from the film and he took that and kind of put his that, flavor yes. on it yeah mm -hmm. so it's, it's kind of an iconic uh still from the movie and so uh, kevin um took a few things and, and worked up some designs and, and as soon as we saw that one it's like boom that that encapsulates the whole tone and essence i think of the whole movie so uh yeah it worked out and actually we just got a best poster award at um the first monthly film festival uh cool. for a best poster award we also got best horror and what best indie feature and we, we got a few things there so so that's nice. a lot of fun that's cool you know i'll, I'll pat ourselves on the back collectively a little bit there yeah but, that's yeah. amazing I, I know you the movie's been doing really well at um, festivals um, the reviews have been awesome coming in ben and i loved it um in fact thank you I, I, we we don't want to spoil anything just yet maybe later on we can but yes this is a still from the end right when you that big twist that you didn't see coming. Um, <laughs> yeah. But be before we get there, I guess my first question is, can you tell us a little bit about how Harlow's Haunt came to be? What was the, uh, what I don't know, what was the creative process? What was the pre-production like? Uh, yeah, well, it kind of, you know, came from from my my crazy brain. Um, I, I've been a writer for years. I've wrote a lot of editorial stuff not directly related to horror, but my background is in technology that parallels film. So I've worked with a lot of filmmakers over the years and I always wanted to um, just, you know, continue diving deeper into the, into film production. And so I work with a lot of camera systems, technology, things like that, that also went along with my writing. Um, so Harlow's actually is sort of loosey goosey based on a lot of creepy stuff here in Florida. There's a lot of things that went on back in the, you know, 1800s, this and that. And there's all these weird little towns and settlements and things that cropped up from some maybe nefarious sources and backgrounds. So I, that just lit a thought and I've got all these starts and bits and pieces of, of stories I've written over the years that just started all gravitating toward this one story. So that uh, kind of, um, kind of is where Harlow's haunt came from. So it was just a mix of, of a bunch of different characters that didn't, really have a place but they all found their place right in this story so it was kind of fun that way cool and i mentioned um, ben before you ask a question i, I mentioned uh, before we started recording we had some issues with getting the the movie to play for ben he's in the uk so we ended up doing a zoom meeting um and i streamed the the movie so he could watch it and shared my screen share my screen with him um and I had already seen it, so I knew how everything sort of comes together. But there's one moment um, in the final act where where there's sort of mayhem going on, and there's a lot of gore and killing. And Ben's like, "I don't understand how this all comes together." And then when it does, he's like, "Oh, I get it now." Um, so, so nicely done there. That, very, that clever. Was awesome. very clever. Very clever. That was. Um... But, but go ahead, Ben. I'll let you jump in. No, no. Uh, well, I was going to ask if there was any truth um, in the story of 
Carlos Quant or but you, you kind of just answered that. So um, my next question would be, with locations and stuff, were they easy to find? Were they quite close to each other or were they quite they, spread out? They really weren't. And, and you know, I, I'll answer this. I'm sure <laughs> Amy might have some to jump in on too. Um, you know, we, we live in the kind of between Orlando and Tampa, Florida stretch. So it's, it's not, it's building up, it's getting you know, commercialized and all that stuff, but it's still kind of, you don't have to stray very far to get out in the woods, to get out in, in the country. So um, there's a big part of the movie centers around just like an old wooden cabin kind of out in the woods. When I was writing it and doing pre-production, I thought piece of cake. There's probably 5,000 of those. It'll be easy. Incredibly difficult to find. It was horribly difficult to find a location. We were really, really, really lucky to be connected with a, a local haunt attraction here. It's called Sir Henry's Haunted Trail. It's a very popular independent haunt attraction um, in Plant City, Florida. And uh, I approached the owner, a guy named Zach Glaris, could not be a bigger sweetheart. He just... He and his whole whole team, his whole crew just opened the doors because it was their off season last last spring, last summer when we were shooting. Mm -hmm. And they were super accommodating. They they were just stoked to that we were using it for a film set. They had exactly sets that we had in mind to go out and build. It's like, have you like been like sneaking into our dreams and like going and building these? I mean, it's like so good. And they just kind of gave us the run of the place. And so we can't thank those guys enough. Um, the, uh, the middle scenes, again, I don't want to give too much away, but where the, the friends kind of connect there in the middle, yes. that was shot at, um, a, another sort of a, an attraction entertainment area, um, re real near Disney, it's called Old Town. And so they were, they were the same. They just really opened the doors and, and were like, Hey, we just, you know, we're, we're behind you. I mean, they're, they're very supportive over indie film and, and what we're doing as well as the city of Kissimmee. And um, we had their their full backing. And there's like a, uh, that musical montage thing was shot right downtown Kissimmee on a lake at a park there. So, um, so yeah, so between Kissimmee, uh, Old Town Attraction in Kissimmee and Sir Henry's Haunted Trail, they covered our locations. And I can't be more appreciative of all those people. Yeah, very cool. And you oh. mentioned the, the, yeah, very cool. Uh, you mentioned the music sequence. Can you say a little bit more about that? Because I know in our chats, you were very excited uh, uh, about getting that song and, and putting it in the film. I was really, really excited about that song. Um, I, um, over, you know, what, the years or whatever, I've always you know, been a, a big fan of certain bands. I mean, we all are. And I, I've been a big Bush fan for years. I've always, always just, you know, cool. dug their shows, been to all their shows. Yeah. And you know how you kind of make connections online. I got chatting with Corey Britz, who's not the original, but he's the current uh, bass player for Bush. He's played with him for years um, and just a super nice dude. And he um, released a record of his own a couple of years ago. Um, actually, I've got the CD here because our song came from it. Very nice. Slightly nice. exaggerated tales of, of past events. Really good record. And I, again, it's funny how things work. I'm just like driving around and listening to this thing. And there's this one song called The Violent Circus, and it fit this one thing I had in mind just like a glove. It was like he wrote it for it. So I'm paying Corey. It's like, hey, I don't know how we do this, but you know, can I use the song? And it was so then we had to go through his management and everything to get the rights and, and, and all that. But um, it just really sort of sets the tone for the opening of that second act of the movie. It sort of explains where the one character head is what what uh, they have been through and what what they're kind of confronting it just really tells a little mini story in it plus it's a great song and so Corey is great, uh, yeah. Corey is great and Nick Hughes who's also Bush's drummer is the drummer on it so um so it's kind of cool to have two Bush guys <laughs> I mean it's not a Bush song but you know it's 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 two guys from Bush involved, with it. involved <laughs> and and they they're just super guys too again um they they've been super happy to help and and just it just fits and it works, you know, regardless of who did it. But uh, it's, it's exciting to have those guys involved. So, yeah, I, I thought it was awesome. Um, and, and it worked really well because there's such a transition from the, the first act. Right. I, I mean, most of the first act that starts in yeah. the past. Um, and then it's almost like it, it takes you right into the present. And, and the song was, was a nice um, 
was a nice touch and an addition. Well, thank uh, you. Yes, no, I, I thought it worked really well. <laughs> um, so Amy, I, I have a question for you. So I, I, I assume that you were involved right from the beginning with the film. Did you always know that you would play Beth or were you considering other parts? Um, and how did that- um, When when Terry shared the script with me, he kind of was just like, here's the script, read it. Call me when you read it and let's talk about it and let me know what you gravitate towards, like what character you're kind of feeling. So. Mm -hmm. He sent it over, I read it immediately, talked to him the next morning, and I immediately just loved Beth. Yes. <laughs> um, she's not that hard for me to play because there's so many parallel similarities between her character and, you know, she's very playful and quirky and, you know, can also kind of have a little bit of a attitude if you piss her off. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I, I just thought that she had opportunities for a little bit of a comedic undertone, whatever she could shove some things in there. And I liked the relationship that she had within the group of friends. And I liked the playful relationship that she had with Dylan's character, Ben. Yes. So, um, you know, I, I just really felt like I connected with Beth and Terry was like, hey, great. I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what I was thinking for you. <laughs> That's awesome. Exactly. So you all, did you write it for her and with her in mind or, or no? No, I no, really didn't. No, it was mostly know? written. I, you know, <laughs> of course you go back and refine and polish and mess with it. But but for the most part, it was done. And after Amy and I you know, talked a little bit, um, it, it was like, I, I'm wanting to tell her to just read Beth, but I, I don't want to. I want I want to let her find Beth. I don't want to <laughs> like um, um, put any like preconceived colors of on this like uh to to maybe disregard the other parts i, I want to see if if beth connects with her rather than she connects with beth yes. i think it worked that way yeah i think so too the very very strong character portrayal and i think uh you did an amazing job thank you yeah she's a fun character to play so you're so sweet yeah she's really <laughs> sweet very sweet and she wants to be right <laughs> yes. um dylan you play hey. Ben. Awesome yes. man, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> so how was you reached out about this? Did you already know each other or did you audition? So, yeah. So um before um Harlow's Haunt, I was in a I was involved in another film called The Peace Comes at Midnight, and um I had connected with Terry uh because he was doing a lot of the BTS shots, if I remember correctly. And he and I met each other in um, like the, the film studios RV, uh, when they owned that they had for other actors to come in and do, you know, hang out and whatnot. And so uh, we had connected, we were talking about things like Halloween Horror Nights and some of his camera work and whatnot. And a couple months later, after uh, filming mm -hmm. that, um, he hits me up and says, Hey, like when you get the chance, um, do you think you can call me? I said, sure thing. And he was telling me about this project and how he would really love for me to be involved. At first, I wasn't really sure, uh, what, uh, my schedule was going to look like, but eventually I had the awesome opportunity to join the team and, um, experience Harlow's haunt for what it is. Awesome. Very cool. That's great. Yeah. And, and it's so awesome that you're on both you and Amy are on because you are yeah. a couple in the film. I um, didn't have to say that. I didn't have to give it away. So if we could that. say that. <laughs> yeah. Something something special happens between you two. maybe I won't give that away. Um I mean I guess we yeah, could spoil it. There were a lot of FUs. <laughs> um, before I forget, Amy, those horns that you wear in the end were so awesome. Um, they like jump right off the screen. I don't know if Terry or Amy, I don't know if you planned that or if it was just I mean, how did that happen? Was it just that like was actually something that we kind of decided on pretty last minute? Um, you know, because it was Halloween night and we're like, okay, we don't want to be dressed up because we don't technically know where we're going early on in the story. So let's just wear regular clothes. Like we're going out to have them with our friends on Halloween. And, 
Mm -hmm. Um, then we figured, okay, when you go to a haunt, you might throw something on, or sometimes they sell Mm -hmm. things, you know, merch that you can buy before you go in. So Terry had the idea for the horns and I love that. (laughs) And I had no idea how amazing that was going to show up on film, especially shot with such a dark atmosphere and dark lighting. It just really popped and it, it it gave a really cool vibe, but I I loved how it turned out. It's it's funny you say that because we went to a, I went to a big stadium (laughs) gig um, to watch ACDC and everyone had like red horns on. All That's around cool. the stadium, it looked so cool that where these glowing cool. horns were. Yeah, yeah so they, it, it looked amazing, and then it kind of really makes you remember that for the horns. Yeah. So I didn't realize how impactful it was going to be, um, but you know, we just went for it, and it turned out really good. So I'm glad you guys liked it. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I was going to say it worked with the character too. It was very fitting. It did, yeah. Um, a, a perfect add-on, <laughs> especially like, <clears throat> excuse me, you're in the in the moment. You realize you're the one character that's that's like get me out of here you're the first one that's like get me the f out of here <laughs> um uh, i don't know I, those horns really resonated and, and stick with you <laughs> we, we've got and not not getting too much away you probably still bloodied up yeah, oh, Christine cool. Mules who played amber wore those yeah. yes i was just going to say amber's character yeah. um so in the end, I mean, I guess I will say that this film takes some unexpected turns right from the beginning, pretty much. Um, but in the end, there are some gory scenes. So any horror fans um, out there, check this out for that alone. Um, can you talk a little bit about what it was like filming the, those gory scenes? And I don't know, all the, the fake it, blood. and it, it was it was a oh, those kind of scenes are just insanely fun to shoot because you you just you can kind of let your imagination off the leash and just go crazy um we um we shot those uh at at sir henry's at the haunt and one of their mazes they they're actually redoing everything now for this season but they had at that time they had three different mazes and this setting um if you notice like all the corrugated steel walls and all that stuff that that setting is like in an old it it's kind of reminiscent of like the the jaws movie like where quint lived you know the old fishing shacks and all that kind of stuff so that that was like a part of the maze that you go through where they had like you know like these just chopped up fish parts and you know and body you know human parts and things like that but of course all that was cleared out and um so we we lit everything in red as you can tell and um you know Again, not giving a whole lot away. I wanted to shoot it with some with a lot of energy in the camera work. So, of course, pretty much everything was shot handheld. I, I mean, there's some tripod shots, but mostly handheld because it gives such a different energy. But especially for those very visceral scenes like that, and the the all the characters in in the, the that act with with the kills brought so much to the table they they brought so much authentic fear i think that we after some of the takes would just stop and say oh my god are you okay (laughs) i mean it it really (laughs) was like so good and 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 these two uh with again not giving anything away but what happens it was so intense that after we call cut it would just be quiet for a minute and then people would start, you know, you hear like a little nervous giggle out of somebody and then everybody would kind of kick back in, in the normal mode. <laughs> it, it was so, so much power in those scenes. So getting the lighting, getting the, the, the acting, the performances and everything to just kind of click just was, was magic. I mean, it, it, you hear people talk about movie magic. Well, that is the only way I can describe it. It just really, really clicked. And, and while I was sitting in an editing chair, putting this stuff together, it was like, when you know we shot those scenes the very last night so that was our last day of filming were the were the kill scenes wow so what you see was shot i think we wrapped it about 4 a.m it was oh my gosh but it, it was a long day but at the same time we knew it was the last night together filming and so we just didn't want it to end 
and to keep it going but, um, i've actually got some really cool behind the scenes videos of dylan especially i'll eventually put them up on social media <laughs> but um <laughs> him getting all bloodied up and all the blood splattered on his face and i'm just like you know he's trying to get in the zone and like prepare for you know the kill scene and i've got you know my iphone in his face like oh he looks so fucking sick with all the blood so um, <laughs> we were just trying to savor that whole moment because you know number one it's a, they're cool scenes to shoot mm -hmm. but you also have that nervousness going into it because you know that you're going to be so in the moment when it happens so definitely a lot of prep goes into that beforehand and then yes. as you're prepping you know you know dylan's getting bloodied up and my you know we're all just battered in blood <laughs> not wanting the night to end <laughs> So an awesome oh, night, Ben. It was fun. Yeah. Ben, before you jump in, I just want to add on to that. Um, in the one scene in the end, Dylan, you do so much screaming. Um, I was just about to ask about that. Oh, go, I stole your question. Go ahead, Ben, then you can ask. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, um, when we were watching it together, Ben and I were wondering, I was like, gosh, he must have lost his voice and been sore for days after that. Or <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> oh, man. Um, well, uh, I think it was a uh, the fact that it was a it was a long night. It was the last night of filming, pretty much, and I think the shoot was around two or three a.m. in the morning. And I don't know. I, it's uh, so I, I I get delirious if if I like if I'm out in the hot sun or if I'm tired or like everybody else. So I think <laughs> when it came to that, it's like okay, like I either have to like give it all or I'll like come off mediocre, but I don't want to be doing too much. So it was just a matter of just like, mm. here we go. Let's just jump right in. Let's just, I don't know, just, just literally uh, react to what's going on, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Cause it's a, it's a tragedy, you know? Uh, so I did the best of what I could with that um but uh i'll also just like try to like in, in a way connect the screaming less of like oh i'm seeing something horrible and um try to connect with with like a little bit of pain in there <laughs> yeah, we definitely done that <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it was so sure. sense when dylan started screaming yeah, like that i was right next to him and i i couldn't even watch him like I didn't even want to look because the sound that was coming out of him was that to me it sounded oh, it was like horrific. grief, it sounded <laughs> like a real. growling yeah. grief, like that sound that comes out of you when you're in a dark state of of grief and you're really trying to process something but you can't. Yeah. That's the sound that we heard, and he's right here, and I'm like I I, it, I couldn't even look at him. <laughs> I wanted to bump it up a notch because it's like, okay, we've got, we've got the like the gory shock value. Let's maybe we can try emotional shock value in, in that kind of sense. So I'm I'm glad I'm glad it worked. <laughs> oh, it was so awesome. I mean, so I mean, Amy, you did a lot of screaming too, but um Ben and I certainly commented on it. It was like, wow, this guy's really screaming. It was powerful. Yeah, we coined him Scream Queen. <laughs> yeah. There's more than one Scream Queen in the film. <laughs> <laughs> nice job yes yeah you should get a t-shirt screen uh, yeah that'd be awesome. yeah. Joke. <laughs> go ahead ben <laughs> um terry you signed it was uh this film come around from uh, a lot of ideas you've had um and it ended up in the movie did the movie change a lot from what you did right as you was filming did you think oh this would be a good idea or that would be a good idea so how much did it change from the original script that's that's an excellent question. It um, <clears throat> I'm I'm real. I don't know. I I other projects and films and filmmakers I've worked with. I am the one that drives them nuts because I don't. I'm not a super by the book type. I consider everything, even a locked script, as sort of a suggestion, and always open to anybody's input, any of the cast, whatever. Not that you know, we just scrap everything and start fresh. But um, once you kind of get in that dynamic of even a, a shoot, you have have everything in mind, but you might get there that day and 
just something comes along that, that changes your thoughts about maybe a camera angle, maybe have, you know, character A and B switch sides. I mean, just something weird like that. So we, we changed up a lot of that. The story itself didn't change much. Now, one thing that we did change that's pretty significant, um, I don't think Dylan was there for this, but a Amy sure was. Um, it's the opening scenes with Harlow and Eldora in the cabin. And those were, um, if you saw the script, and especially as an actor, you would just immediately grab a bottle of tequila and just say, oh my God, what is this? I mean, it, it was so wordy and it's so a lot of dialogue sense. Mm -hmm. A lot of yeah, a ton, ton of, ton of dialogue. But an important dialogue, but it, because it, it's, you're developing the character. So there was a lot of stories. Oh, yeah. Right. So, so we, we worked with the, the, the two actors on that um, in a really unique way. And that's what really nailed those, those, those scenes. When we called cut, it, it, again, it was dead silence in the room. It was like, we've just witnessed something happen here that's just amazing. So, Carrie's oh, really, all about collaborating, which I love working with somebody like that, because like you said, it's not like, this is what we're doing and this is the only way and this is our Bible. It's like, no, like we're all creatives here and we all, you know, perceive things differently. And if somebody mm -hmm. has a suggestion or somebody wants to change a line or I know Ben and I changed a ton of lines. You <laughs> 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 start saying something Terry's like, what the hell is that? But you know, <laughs> um, you know, he he gave us the flexibility to play around with our characters and play around the dialogue and the scene and add or take away or you know shift a little bit. So I can really appreciate that as an artist having that kind of flexibility because number one it makes it fun and number two you never know what you're going to get on camera and sometimes it's something really exciting and really good and magic happens right those are the moments that yeah. that makes it all worth it uh so so i must ask since we're talking about the intro um how did you get john dugan on board who's from the original texas chainsaw massacre and what was it like working with him i i've never heard of him who john did uh, no. Did I say his um, name right? I'm kidding. No, no. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I, I'm, well, you're, you're a victim of my sense of humor. What, another one. I take another one down. No, um, no. no I know. I was joking. <laughs> John, um, I've known John quite a while. Um, I used to be, um, well, I still am involved with a uh, another um, show, the Indie Escape Network. It used to be uh, the Romero Pictures Indie Brigade. And so John was a guest on there quite a bit. And I got talking to him just, we were on shows together and we would you know, talk after the show and we just kind of hit it off. And to be quite honest, here's a, here's a big bombshell. When I started writing Harlow's Hunt and the central character, Harlow Dugan was immediately front and center in my brain. So I wrote the part That's all cool. around Dugan, the dialogue, every word of it, I heard coming out of his mouth and everything. So then so I, I'm, and I know him and we've been, you know, been to conventions together. We've done events and stuff together and, and spent a lot of time with him. But I was like, I was like a, a little five-year-old kid. I was like, Oh, I'm afraid to ask him. I'm afraid to ask him. So <laughs> finally, I just, I just uh, kind of like Dylan. It's like, I sent him a message said, Hey, John, can you call me? I want to ask you a question. And, you know, it's t you know, I know you're going to tell me it's stupid, but Hey, so we get on the phone, we're talking. He's like, Oh, and you know, one of these times we've got to get Dugan on. Um, he yes, uh, so you, you can kind of get the the gist of John. He's his own energy. He was like, "Well, what is it? What do you want to ask me?" I said, "Well, I'm going to make this little movie, and you know, I'd like to have you in it." And, uh, All right, where are you shooting it? I gave him the dates, and he said, "Okay, yeah." And then he just goes on talking about something else. I said, well, it is back at that. was a yes, right? <laughs> well, yeah. He said, you asked me, what the hell am I going to do? What else am I going to do? <laughs> well, let awesome. me pick myself up off the floor now. So yeah, he, and he is, I, I told everybody before uh, he came down, I said, you are going to fall in love with this guy. We None of us are going to want him to leave. We're going to try and kidnap him, keep him tied up somewhere. He is the greatest dude ever. He is just so sweet so down he's just one of the gang and he do, uh, love him to death uncle Dude. he is a total sweetheart oh, he is. 
He's well, so I'm, fun. When he comes down, we like fight over who gets to, you know, pick him up and drop him off at the airport. Cause he's, <laughs> out with him. Oh, he's a good time. Bad. He's always down to hang out and do something. So but, but on set, when you, when you call action, man, he is all business. He is ready. Yeah. To go. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's, he's a he good was, dude. Yeah, um, he, was very good. And he and Crystal um, Gorski played off each other really well. It was a nice combination. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. That was, that goes back to, well, the first scene Terry was talking about that had so much dialogue in it. And um, Terry really just gave them the freedom to, he's like, look, you know, the story, you know, the points we want to hit, you know, the impact that we're trying to make the audience feel let's just do it. Just let it roll. You guys, you know, and they did, they played off of each other and Terry actually got that whole scene in one shot. He did not cut the camera because what was happening, we were just like, I was in the back of the cabin just sitting there like, holy shit, what am I watching right now? Because it was so organic and grounded and they were, their energy and their eyes, like everything about them was locked into the other person. Mm -hmm. And there was no way that Terry was going to call cut that would have been insane so that before he changes the camera angle that very long scene that was all one take it was almost a seven minute oh. unbroken shot that I, I i don't even know if i think about halfway in they forgot there was a camera in the room they they were those two people they were not john and crystal anymore they they literally transformed into those two characters it's it's i know it sounds silly to say that but until you're right there with it it's shocking and then when you call cut and see them kind of pull themselves back to reality is is again it's kind of a weird dynamic you see but you, you see that immersiveness and one thing we've done is really try and tell a lot of story here and talk not directly but indirectly about the characters and what where what their perspective of life um each other um their their position in the day is instead of just kind of being a slasher all the way through and then leading up to that the you know kind of leading to this end but um um yeah so you know there's a lot of dialogue and and all that stuff along the way but it's it's we preserved really critical stuff about um again what happens in the 1920s and how it affects what's going on today and and how we loop back to that and kind of intertwine it. And it's sort of, you know, the one long hundred year story. Yes. Yes. Well, it seemed very natural. And one of my questions was, which you already answered is how much of it was off script um, because it just seemed so real. Um, and I, oh, I really, oh, go ahead. Oh no, I'm sorry. That, that energy you, you can, you know, actors, you know, and depending on skill and all can, you know, take lines verbatim and make them seem real. Um, but if it, again, it's just kind of a weird way of, of directing. If it's coming from a real place, it's going to feel real. I think it's going to, I hate, I hate to use the term, sell it to the audience better, but it's going to present, I think, to the audience better. They're going to be able to connect with Eldora and Harlow rather than Crystal playing Eldora and John playing Harlow. I, th I think it makes more of a natural feel. And yes. I, I try to use that right down to camera work. Like if you were a fly on the wall, if you were sitting at a table with this group of people, what would your perspective be to all this? And, and I, I think that also comes from the, uh, the performances of all the cast. They are able to bring that organic energy. I think I, I also what kind of helps is um, the environment that we're working with, you know, because when it comes to either filming and, really loud place or uh in the middle of uh the woods or whatnot um it's still almost it's it's still florida base so there's that sort of comfortability over there um when it comes to not letting the environment be it sometimes it's an obstacle but not too much to the point where it just completely ruins um what we're trying to capture Mm -hmm. And with Dugan and Crystal's character, okay, so we would do table reads before we started mm -hmm. filming, right? Because we're all Florida-based, yes. Um, but some of us are more Tampa, some of us are more Orlando, and then Dugan, who's in Tennessee, so he would zoom in, and him and Crystal would have their time together, and they really had a unique connection off the bat before they started filming, and they had the 
that time together doing their reads and going over lines and talking about the characters and the story that they're telling. And um, they just had this really authentic common ground. And so when it was time to do that scene, I think that because of the relationship they had already established, that's what you're seeing. They, they know each other. They, they trust each other as an artist and as a scene partner. And when you trust your scene partner, that's gold because you know, no matter what you guys are going to carry that scene together. Exactly. Yes. Makes sense. Um, Actually, I've got a question for Amy, uh, going back to Screen Queens. If uh, given the chance and you could be a Screen Queen in a franchise, uh, what would it be? <laughs> any franchise? Harlow's Haunt. We're going to keep making our own Screen Queens. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Good choice. Good choice. We're not done yet, so. Oh, that's good. Awesome right, choice. You know. Oh, I completely forgot. I actually have um, some viewer questions from one oh. uh, viewer who I know likes the movie. Um, she's on Instagram, Beth Loves Horror. I know she did oh, a yeah. And we love Beth. And, we do love it. Um, and that reminded me of the question. Uh, Terry, have you started or finished writing the script for a sequel? Mm, sequel. Um, I don't know, Amy. Have we started or finished a script? <laughs> <laughs> Let it... Um, we haven't finished it. I can say that, um, but okay. there, the, well, the wheels are grinding. The the meat grinder is is grinding. So, uh, Very cool. so yeah. So stay tuned. Um, yeah, there, there's fun fun stuff afoot. We've awesome. just dipped a toe in the water. You can say. <laughs> there was so much to play off of with the first one, especially having the dual timelines. There's so much meat there, and there's so mm -hmm. much that. Um, the characters told within their own stories that we are really able to pull from and connect. And so we've been, you know, having a little bit of fun kind of outlining out the second one and we've, we've got some really cool ideas, so. Awesome. Um, yeah. She actually had a follow-up question uh, yeah. for Amy and Dylan. What, up, what upcoming projects do you have that you can share without getting in trouble? Um, you go ahead first, Dylan. Okay. Um, uh, at the moment, right now, as far as film goes, um, uh, just waiting on Harlow's Han at the moment. I'm just looking for whatever opportunities are next. And the end. Um, the end that's coming. Well, starting filming that should be this year. It wasn't given a specific date, but really excited for that. Um, I've been a very involved in um, a band uh, with my bandmates right now. Oh, cool! So we're doing a little bit of the the music side of things at the moment. Um, but yeah, say, it's. Can you say a little bit about the Beast Comes at Midnight? Is that something that you're involved? With? Yeah, yeah. So um, Beast Comes at Midnight. Um, it is with uh, Chris, um, the director, Chris Jackson. Um, it's filmed by uh, Cineview Studios. They're located over in Clearwater. And um, it was during 20 year 2021. Um, okay. I went over there, uh, filmed for like a month or two over in the Tampa area. Um, it was really fun. It stars Michael Pere. Uh, from Eddie and the Cruisers and oh, cool. uh, other notable works. And um, that's a, Coming another, soon. another notable name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eric Roberts. Oh, yes. yes. Eric I Roberts. I, I forgot that, that name. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He has um, a famous sister you may have heard of. <laughs> yeah. I, I think her name is Julia. Uh, I don't know. Something mm. like that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's been, it's been featured at other, uh, smaller, um, some, in, I think independently owned, uh, movie theaters. Um, as far as the official release date, uh, I haven't heard too much about that, but I'm, uh, like amongst others just waiting for that. 
that day to come. But that was that was a really fun project. I wouldn't say it was so much of a very gory horror. It was almost like um uh like a like a Goonies horror movie. Oh cool. Oh, it like makes monst- any sense. Monster yeah. Squad. Yeah, definitely very Monster Squad. Um very almost like like a like something you can watch with your family or your kids. Cool. Like her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very family. Yeah, very definitely. It's perfect family Sunday friendly. night movie. Sunday night it's movie Sunday. with the kids. With the kids in. <laughs> I'll, I'll make you, sorry i was gonna say i'm in the uk is there any um how would i be able to get a copy or anyone in the uk if they wanted a copy would they be able to get it oh of the film of, of the dvd oh, no, sorry, well, sorry. I, i'll let amy answer her her project question and then um do i have an answer yeah. oh okay um projects well besides harlow's haunt too that terry and i are currently playing around with there. We stay pretty busy in that aspect. Um, we're on the phone every day <laughs> talking about that and, and working out, um, you know, just everything that goes into that. Um, and I, it's going to be a busy year. I do have three other horror feature films um, that I'm going to be shooting cool. between the first one starts in about two weeks. Oh, nice. And- goes through the spring and then the other one is going to be in the summer and just to throw another curveball into that um there's a all-female cast comedy play that I was a part of last year and we're picking that back up to do a run of shows as well that's called Icebreakers and it's a really fun play I I drug these guys out to it so (laughs) uh just you know staying busy with horror and comedy and writing and you know loving it cool yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And, and I, I will piggyback on that. Um, Dylan and I went to see Icebreakers last last fall. I can't remember, maybe September, October, whenever it was. Yeah. And anybody in the Tampa area or wherever wherever it, it plays, get out and see that. It it it's it's amazing. It, it's hilariously funny, but it's very poignant and it has some some really deep emotional stuff too. So it, it doesn't just drag you in one direction and that's it. It's 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 a very very uh very layered story of its own and and the cast just killed it and um um Christine cool. Mullis, who played Amber in in our film is also in the cast oh, yeah, yeah. She's, oh, she's awesome amazing. yeah I was just gonna say that it's fun because um when I got involved with Harlow's Haunt we kind of pulled Christina and I I have studied with her uh, at my actor studio in Tampa for a while and. Um, when I read that breakdown, I was like, I know someone who needs to audition for this role. And she, like no one else, now that she's Amber, like no one else could play Amber. She is just, she is Amber. She's Amber. And then when I got pulled over to this play, I didn't even know that she was a part of it. <laughs> so oh, I showed awesome. up to the first table where I was like, oh shit, <laughs> we get to work together again. And we had just wrapped Harlow's Haunt. And it was like five days later, I signed on to the play. And two days <laughs> later, funny. I showed up for my first rehearsal. And there was Samuels who played Amber. And I'm like, here we go. Let's, <laughs> let's keep going. It's <laughs> great. It's a great. But as far as the DVD, that kind of brings up um, another whole point. Um, we recently joined, we signed with Bayview Entertainment as our exclusive distributors. And um, it, the people that may or may not be aware of who Bayview is, they are really, 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 really big. They're a giant media company, yes. uh, worldwide distribution. They're everywhere. Awesome. They um, recently they they uh, did Skin of Marink. You know, uh, just a few people heard of that. <laughs> really big release, and they have a lot of big you releases. Mean, you mean and, this movie? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that one. <laughs> and um, that they have been. There. <laughs> very atmospheric um but yes. you know a lot of appreciation to the artistic side of that and and For where sure. they went with it and you know it's experimental but yeah we, we liked it ben and I did creating whole, something yeah. completely different than anything else that you've seen and i think that's why it worked yeah you definitely. can't you can't stop watching even though you're like oh my god legos <laughs> It's, it's, it's like kind of Go just pull, keep pulling you through the story. 
Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Bayview is has just been fantastic uh, to us so far. So they're they're working on putting all the distribution together. So we don't Very have cool. any discs right now, but that is part of what what's coming. The DVDs that we did, um, we had so many uh, supporters, followers, um, fans, and all along the the way, along the the the, the production way that. Uh, pretty much as soon as you know we put a final stamp on the edit um people were like okay i need to see i need to see it so i just did like a short run of, of dvds um uh just for that purpose really i mean they weren't intended to hit hit brick and mortar or, or anything like that and we just kind of put them on the website and sold the first few and and you know uh, sent some media copies out and here or there so that wasn't like an official official release so when harlow's goes massively giant and they're all big million dollar collectibles. There you go. But uh, no, teasing. Well, hopefully, uh, maybe I'm not teasing. You never know. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, the, we're we're super super stoked to be with the Bay, Bayview folks, and they're they're just they're doing great things for indie filmmakers in that general. Is. They're really giving a lot of space to the the genre and bringing films that would never see the light of the light of day to two audiences uh, around the world. So we're, we're just very cool to be part of that. Their group. Yes. Congratulations. I yeah. will say again, oh, go ahead, Ben. No, I was saying you, you had a coffee and I was like, I want a coffee. Where'd you get the coffee from? Uh -huh. <laughs> Let me look around and see if there might be one. There might be something laying around. <laughs> yeah, there you might know be. how hard it is. We have, we have people on and it's like, just cannot find copies of movies in the UK so hard. Um, just e even ones that's like been around for years or so. And you have such a nice collection behind you, which you I oh, love. Thank by you. The way. So Isn't we'll that see amazing? If we can add that. We'll, we'll look around. Oh, thank you. That would be cool. I have a request and then a question, and then we'll do some horror trivia. Going back to the cover art, this would be an awesome t shirt, wouldn't it? Oh, just definitely. Be, so if you do a t shirt, I want one and Ben too, and All right. we'll wear it on a future video. Um, but, cool. <laughs> but my serious question is, I know that it's been doing really well at festivals. Feedback has been amazing. Can you talk a little bit about what it's been like going to the festival, showing the movie to audiences um, and getting positive reviews and feedback? What has that experience been like? It must be, I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you say. Well, I'll touch on it and I'll, I'll let these guys jump in. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the festivals we've done where we're looking at such a broad market, the, our biggest wins have come from inter international festivals that so we haven't physically been cool. able to be there. Um, but we have done a couple screenings here in our area, kind of a mini festival thing. Uh, we nice. did one out at the Haunt at Sir Henry's. We had a big blow up screen and all that. And we had uh, a bunch of people there. And then we did another at a... Uh, really cool um venue it's it's like a bar ish type thing called the spook easy lounge in ebor city which is part of tampa it's on the east side of tampa and it's um oh it's the coolest place i mean if, if anybody wants to check it out spook easy lounge ebor, ebor city ybr uh, cool. go just check out their gallery it's like going into the adams family's house i mean all this big black victorian furniture with these big high back chairs and but they have a stage because they, they do all kinds of like open mic nights and stuff so they were kind enough to host a screening there. And John came down for that. We had their whole place was full of people. And after the um, after the movie to hang out and people, you know, coming up and, you know, asking for autographs and things, it was just like surreal. That's and awesome. hearing, hearing people's feedback, kind of, kind of like yours about different scenes or different characters or different things, it really, it, it, it puts your brain in a different space and you're thinking, because you're thinking, yeah, it was like 115 degrees that day, and we were just trying to get this shot before I passed out and dropped the camera on the ground. And, and then, but you hear hear their perspective, like, oh my God, that thing happened. And it's like, oh, okay, now I'm seeing it through your eyes. So it's 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 a lot of fun to hear that feedback and, and hear people compare it to other movies. Like um, um, I, I think Beth did some comparisons uh to our movie, and some others have compared us to like. I mean, I almost pass out saying it like Blair Witch and House of a Thousand Corpses and and movies like that. Oh, yeah. It's like, totally wow. House. I mean, I, if we can be like oh, one percent of the yes. gum on their shoe, Hell House, those movies. Yeah, yeah that reminded me a lot of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that kind of found footage vibe. It's it's there. And we do have um, a big convention. It's actually one of the 
bigger conventions in Florida. It's in Orlando at the end of the month, um, the end of March and kind of goes through the first of April. It's called Megacon. And we cool. are going to be there and our film was selected into their film festival. So that will actually be the first festival that we get to go to and we get oh, to go Oh, the first through. one, okay, okay, I missed, um, that's awesome. And yeah, it'll be featured at the, at the end of the festival on that Saturday. And so I'm excited to watch that with a crowd of people that I don't know <laughs> so that we can hear their feedback afterwards and talk and connect um, because it is fun to hear what you guys have to say and the little things that you pick out that stood out to you because you know mm -hmm. that's important. Mm -hmm as us to know, okay, well, we know how we connect to it, but how does everybody else connect to this? Yes, makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Awesome, let's do some horror trivia. Uh, it's fun, I have a horror trivial pursuit game. Uh -huh. I've been doing it for a while. So there are six categories, do you see that? Kind of, sort of, yeah, paranormal, psychological, monster comedy, something, something and slasher. So just Why do I feel like Terry's going to know everything? I know nothing. I know nothing about horror. <laughs> pick one. Oh, well. <laughs> you pick You've got a horror channel on and never get them right, so don't rip that. Oh, Ben, you've got a few, right? Come on. <laughs> pick one, Amy. Uh, comedy. Oh. All right, what color is that? Blue. All right. Uh, what talk show host was chained in a bathroom with Shaquille O'Neal in Scary Movie 4 in 2006? <laughs> See, these are fun. <laughs> I have no idea. Oprah Winfrey? I don't know. I watch is, Scary is Movie like a, I, Do I get like three people I can pick from? Is it no, really that's it. You just have to pick what talk show host. So 2006, who was the talk show host? I watched Scary Movie 3 last night, if you can believe that. Really? Do you know it? I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is part four, though. I can't believe. Why I didn't I watch part four? There have been so many. <laughs> I don't know. I give up. Make... I can't. Oh that. my god! It's Doctor Phil. Uh, I, it's Doctor oh, Phil. Yeah. Doctor. <laughs> you knew it's Doctor Phil. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> Should have known. I didn't know it. <laughs> Want to do a couple? We'll do two more. Uh, let's do paranormal. <laughs> green uh let's see what food oh here we go what food um i can't read what food item was the gypsy's curse transferred to in stephen king's thinner written in 1984 oh damn i think i know this and there was a movie right i know and i can't in think the it. 90s yeah. yeah it was like a grapefruit or a something i don't know I don't know either. Slice of pizza. Uh, it's a pie. You're close. Slice of a pie. pie. Well, here, let's do one more paranormal. That's right. Uh, Why do which... I want this game all of a sudden? Where, where can I find this game? <laughs> it's here. Look, I um, I got it for Father's Day. Ah, yeah. that is cool. Okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Uh, that and, is cool. And let me show you some of the pieces. You can see I get excited about this. Um, <laughs> the pieces are all like horror themed. Like here's like a dead baby head. And, and oh, you put the yeah. pie. It's like a I don't know, an evil looking. Oh, it's like a, that is cool. Let's uh, let's do one more. Still on you pack. Oh, okay. Uh, hang on. Monster, monster, do monster. Monster. No. Monster. Monster. Yeah, let's do monster. I should learn these colors. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one's kind of easy. Let's see. Uh, which of the three? Wait, which of the three, the Witches of Eastwick stars Cher, Michelle Pfeiffer, or Susan Sarandon reteamed with Jack Nicholson and Wolf in 1994? Um, <laughs> it's either Michelle yeah, Pfeiffer, yeah. Cher, or Susan Sarandon. We suck. <laughs> yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer. Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm on this. Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is Michelle yeah. Pfeiffer. Yes, let me Michelle see if there's Pfeiffer. another Not fun Christine one. Christine Ricci. <laughs> Here's one. I'm gonna do one more. Um, in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning in 2006, what type of factory did Leatherface Leatherface's mother work at when she gave birth to him? Um, it wasn't a what kind of factory? Texas it it wasn't. Got to be like a meat factory or something, right? 
I, I would think it would be like a slaughterhouse or at least a, like it's some a sort of leather slaughterhouse. Yep, you got it. That's Sweet. We started adding in these trivia questions and our viewers were like, you guys got to do more. That's so fun. Um, they were commenting <laughs> on and mess commenting and messaging us like saying, How I can't believe you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's the funniest thing because you, you, I, I sure I speak for her all is here. We know the most arcane, weird <laughs> bits of information, but oh, you, yeah, something yeah. very obvious. It's like, no, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, awesome. Thank you guys. This has been so much fun. Check out Harlow's Haunt. Um, hey. The last thing I wanted to mention, and, and then Ben, we can do our, our quick closing, uh, is how can people, I mean, I guess, how can people see the movie? I mean, I know you mentioned that it's going to be distributed, but how can people find Harlow's Haunt and each one of you on social media? So well, Instagram. I'll, I'll kick it off from there. Um, we're on all the socials. Uh, you can visit our, our website, Black Dog Films with a Z, uh, com, and there's a whole Harlow's Haunt section page and all that. And we, we try to keep that pretty well updated with new stuff. Uh, our, our, probably our biggest, um, interaction is in our Facebook group, Harlow's Haunt Movie. So please jump over, take a look, join us because we post stuff every day. There's all stuff every single day. Awesome. Uh, we're on all the uh, other socials, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, uh, as Harlow's Haunt. And Amy can correct me on anything I've screwed up because she <laughs> manages this and I, I managed to mess it up. So, um. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's that's our stuff. You can find us there. As far as a release date, we don't have that solid yet, but it's coming. Uh, Bayview's working on that, so uh, we're uh, we're just um just biting our nails like everybody else. Can't wait to get it out there. Awesome. Yeah, and if you go to the Harlow's Haunt Instagram page, there is a nice link tree mm -hmm. right there mm -hmm. in the okay. profile, and that takes you to everything. Um, so if you're not sure, just click there, and it'll guide you. Um. And my socials are just not Amy Rolfson. There might be Amy dot Rolfson, Amy underscore Rolfson, but you'll find me. It's Amy Rolfson. And uh, like Terry said, we post stuff every day. We'd like to keep the content um, exciting, whether it's behind the scenes photos or stills or, um, you know, little clips of reels and things like that. Uh, we just like to keep the conversation going and it's a great way to engage the audience and you know people do reach out and ask questions so definitely I'd love to chat with people so yeah check back and let us know if you have any questions and um, we will keep you guys posted when it's available to watch very awesome. cool and maybe at some point we could do a watch party but let's let's talk. yes <laughs> be awesome yeah we love, love to that. do it well, um, let's see, like always, uh, if there's anything you would thank you for watching, and if there's anything you'd like us to cover in a future video, um, add a comment and we will consider it. Yep, go to Instagram, follow us over there, A and B Horror Movies. Also, subscribe on here, hit the likes and uh, all that, yeah. And uh, cheers for watching. <laughs> <laughs> nice job, Ben. It's late. It's late. Can I film that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having us on you guys we really yeah, thank appreciate you. it yes, you thank, awesome. you thank you very much guys. Thank you. all right bye everyone bye, bye. thank you